Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is uh, Yan. I'm currently a cloud native developer at VMware. Um, I'm a sort of leading the project harbor right now. Um, I'm responsible for uh, uh, driving the roadmap, maintaining code base, and collecting feedback. With me, Vadim. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Vadim. I'm not working for uh, VMware, but we're working together with the har on the harbor. Um, Welcome, everyone, and we would like to yep. give you an introduction to, not introduction to Harbor, but an overview about Harbor, what's new, what's coming up next. Yeah, thanks, Mani. Um During this session, we will cover uh, um, uh, introduction to Harbor, including its, its features, um, purpose, where we are right now, um, features, and demos. Um, with the rapid growth of container adoption in recent years, managing cloud native artifacts has become a challenge for many enterprises. According to the CSF survey, container usage in production has seen a dramatic drop from 15 to 85. Um, as developments um, get larger and cloud native adoption has become more mainstream, um, a registry is essential for managing all your cloud native assets. This is where Harbor comes in as a great a key gradient um, for a cloud native environment. Managing production containers can pose challenges such as potential CVE, policy consistency, and registry access. You must know your policies how they are deployed, and who has access to your registry for pulling and pushing images. And you must enforce a compliance policy related to, it, related to your artifacts. Most importantly, you must ensure that your artifacts are free of vulnerability and secure before deploying them um, to Kubernetes or any other container runtime. So um, what is Harbor? Harbor is actually the open source registry. We uh, um, built this project in 2014. Um, originally, the idea just to add a UI to the open source distribution. And we got a lot of good feedback from internally, so we decided to open source it and donate it to the CNCF. And eventually, we graduated from uh, CNCF in 20, at 2020. So, we have learned that uh, don't be afraid to start from small. Um, we never change our mission. That is to be the trusted cloud native repository for Kubernetes. So let's take a look at um, our core tenants. We offer multi-tenancy in two different models. Role-based access control allows for flexible models of defining users and their permissions, giving you the isolation um, at project level. Every project can be tailored to the needs of the individual user who will be using this project. At the core of Harbor is policy. We give you ability to create quotas so that you cannot prevent a use project from being over overused. You can also set retention policy, defining rules that govern how many artifacts of a given repository to retain or for how long to retain them. Additionally, um, we offer immutability to ensure that stable images cannot be overwritten. We also have vulnerability policy, where image cannot be pulled if their layer is smaller, is, uh, is equal or higher than the selected level of severity. In terms of uh, artifact distribution, we offer replication, allowing you to pull a push image from Harbor to another container registry. We also offer a proxy cache, allowing you to proxy and cache images from a target and private register, such as Docker. In addition, we integrate key P2P capabilities of CNCF project, like uh, Dragonfly and Uber Kraken into Harbor, allow users to define policies around this action. Uh, security and compliance are at the core of what we offer. Um, we provide identity access management to one of the user from any identity provider you want, whether it is DAX, FDAP, or anything else. 
for signing, you can use cosign or another way to sign your image, or you have the ability to scan your images and verify the public disclose the CVE. And we have a CVE allow list, allowing you to set exceptions for certain CVEs that you do not have any solution for yet. Last, we offer extension ability. We allow our users to, to deploy hardware within their own infrastructure and make it compatible to, with their existing investments. For example, if you are uh, using a specific uh, CICD tool, we can give you a web hook so that you can integrate with that tool. Additionally, we offer the rubber cards that allow for hardless configuration and running automated actions in your system. Furthermore, we have a full REST API. Anything you can do uh, using the Harbor API, you can do it through the REST API. Um, let's take a closer look at the Harbor architecture. In the middle, the Harbor core is a collection of components that provide essential functionalities, such as project, artifact management, configuration, quotas, and more. Under the Harbor core, there are several components, such as garbage collection controller, log collector, integration with uh, notary for signing, and distribution for pulling pushing images. This service services can be individually scaled in a Kubernetes cluster. And Harbor can be deployed using a Docker Compose, Helm chart, and operator. Harbor also offers three data access capabilities, key value store built on top of Redis, local and remote store for storing uh, artifacts, and a database for storing project data policies and access permissions. One of Harbor's um, key feature is integration, allowing for replication and scanning capabilities with replication. Harbor can define replication policies and interact with distribution services such as uh, Docker Hub, um, Amazon ECR, Google GCR, and more. As for scanner, Harbor allows for pluggable scanner, enabling different security companies to introduce their uh, scanner to Harbor. For example, if, if your organization is using Anker, that could be the scanner for Harbor projects. Uh, finally, Harbor uh, provides the observability and the tracing capability. It exposes key metrics that operator can use to monitor its real-time performance. Harbor also offers distributed tracing data using open telemetry. And that means you can expose the tracing data to a Jagger backend directly. Um, so, um, so what do we have uh, in the last two releases? The first is the job service monitor. It is really useful tool that, um, that, that the admin to keep an eye on the job service and control its operation. With the dashboard, you can view, pause, or stop the job execution. Plus, you can use the dashboard data to help you to make decision that about scaling up or down your job service pod, which gives you more control and over your system resources. The best part is that everything is centralized. So you can control or monitor the job service from a single and easy to use um, dashboard. Uh, next is a uh, replication by trunk. So when you need to copy a large amount of data there is a feature called copy by trunk. That can help. Um, this feature splits into big, day, big blob into small pieces, which make it easier to copy them over, in, over network. This is especially helpful when the network connection is not very strong, uh, like when you are working with the edge computing. By using this feature, you can increase the chances that the replication will work and the data will be copied correctly. And to enable that, 
all that you all you need to do is just click a button when you're creating the revocation policy. Um, next is the features on the latest release. That is the OCI 101 adoption. Uh, in the past, container registry were intended to store the uh, container on, in, image only. With the introduction of OCI, container registry can store other artifacts like uh, SBOM, signature, tags, or even videos. The OCI 101 goes even further and allows you to establish the relationships between artifacts. This is a compiling functionality that allows you to create structure like this. And now, Harbor is not just a storage place for images, but a generic artifact story that can also define relations between artifacts. Um, lately, we, we did uh, some fundamental enhancement on the webhook to make it more useful and scalable. One of the is ability to keep track of webhook history. That can be helpful for tracing and managing the webhook activity. Another improvement, another improvement is the ability to debug the webhook jobs. Um, that means when a webhook is triggered, logs are generated that can help identify and fix any issues that may raise. And finally, there's now an option to choose format of the job of the web webhook for payload. Um, being able to choose the format can help ensure that the webhook data is compatible with receiving application. So now in uh, 2008, we support self-designed uh, um, format and cloud events. Um, so um, this is the, the demo for um, um, OCI 101 adoption. So in the demo, firstly, I will uh, upload an uh, artifact. And after that, I will use the cosine client to sign this demo artifact. So, um, so now we are trying to sign the, this demo artifact. After uh, X66, you can refresh the page to see the signature is attached to the demo artifact. So next, uh, uh, let's use to cosign to push uh, as well. And please know that we are using the experimental OCI 101 mode in cosign. And after that, we can refresh the page. You will see the two attachments, the S bomb and the signature, alongside with the demo artifact. And we can also use the cosine client to view the linkage between these artifacts. After the cosine tree command, you can see these two attachments. And Finally, we can even give uh, S bomb its own signature using cosine. We will sign the S bomb artifact. And after that, you will see the signature of the S bomb at the third level and with the demo artifact as a root. So now there are three layers. So next, let's try to replicate this artifacts to another harbor named Harbor 2 that I have already added as a replication endpoint in Harbor 1. So after we replicate the artifact to Harbor 2, you will see all the attachment 
will be replicated together. So now we can go to the Harbor 2 to see whether there's three layers the same as the Harbor 1. So this is the demo for OCI 101. And Next one. Yeah. The next demo is the, the job service dashboard. Um, the job service dashboard monitor three categories, the job queue, schedules, and workers. The job queue display the pending jobs in total. A schedules show all the Chrome configurations of the current harbor. And workers are the business units responsible for distributing jobs. And in the data grid below, you can view all the predefined jobs, like uh, uh, garbage collection, image scan, and replication. And switch to schedule, you can see all the schedules in details. And workers, each harbor core has one worker pool. And by default, there are 10 workers. All of them are current in adult status. So now let's try to uh, create a schedule for garbage collection and check it in the job service dashboard. Yeah, now we have three schedules right now. And we can pause all the schedules with the job service dashboard. And that then we can check it in the clean page to see the schedule has been passed. Now next, let's try to uh, execute a replication task and control and monitor it in the job service dashboard. So now we can see there are more than 15 penny jobs in the queue. And all the 10 workers are become busy now. So we can also track the running job, the running logs of each replication task. So we have a lock button. You can see the running logs here. So now let's try to pause the uh, running replication and try to free all the workers. So since uh, the, the replication is passed, the job service will not distribute any pending replication task. So we can resume the replication task again. So then we will see all the 10 workers will be occupied again by the uh, replication task. Yes, so now the 10 workers are busy now. All of them are running the execution job. So this is a demo for uh, job service at H4. All right, so this have been features that are already part of uh, 2.7 and 2.8, so you can use them already now. Let's look at uh, some other functionalities that exist in Harbor that are already exist, but are not yeah, that known yet. And one of those features or functionalities is a new ZUP project we have now in Harbor, which is a Terraform provider. It is now part of Harbor. It was initially developed by the company Bestseller and who donated the project to Harbor. So it's now under our uh, rooftop and we maintain and, uh, you know, 
uh, extend the project. It's maintained by Florian Blampy from SNCF. And um, because the, the project went from bestseller to harbor, um, some folks from Pulumi, uh, Engen Deary, decided it would be a good idea to have also a Pulumi provider for harbor. And now we also have a Pulumi provider for harbor. So this means that you could, well, I mean, the big advantage here is that you can use the, the old infrastructure as a code functionality that you normally use with your infrastructure. You can use it now to configure Harbor itself. And it's a really powerful functionality because you can do things this way that you cannot do with the UI or uh, with the REST API in that easy, you know? So the most important part is if you would like to introduce a self-service functionality into your Harbor, so if you're kind of an ops team and you're maintaining a Harbor instance and you would like to um, you know, make it possible for developers to self-service requests to projects, requests to, you know, permissions to, for this, for that. You can do it in a self-service manner with, um, you know, Terraform or Pulumi. Um, there is um, a good opportunity, so if you would like to extend your GitOps workflows, you know, beyond your infrastructure, so you would like to extend the GitOps workflow to your application, this is also a great way to accomplish this, right? So we have now these two uh, providers, Terraform and Pulumi, and the good thing is if you're, you know, happen to use uh, Terraform in the past, you know, with AWS or uh, Azure, you know things take really, really long time, you know, so you can grab a coffee when something's happening. This is not the case for, for Harbor, you know, it takes like a second, you know, until everything is complete, which is really um, a surprise, you know, <laughs> when you run it. Um, and it's really easy to understand, right? So it's like really simple to understand. You can automate a lot of things, basically everything in Harbor with Terraform. Same goes with Pulumi. This is a Pulumi uh, Python example. It's a straightforward Pulumi example. You can, you know, you can write it in TypeScript, JavaScript, uh, Java, Golang, whatever. It's a really simple way to automate your workflows. This is already available and uh, you can use it already and yeah. Now, I would like to show you a few things or explain you a few things that we are currently working on that will come into Harbor in 2.9 and, and beyond. One of the things we're currently working on is, it's, this is part of the LFX program, so it's a Linux Foundation Menti program. Uh, one Menti is working on that. It's an official Harbor CLI. There are plenty of CLIs out there for Harbor, but we would like to you know, consolidate it and, and bring it all together. And it will allow you basically to manage your hardware instance from the CLI. You can do it you know, from a CLI, you can do it from a CI CD, like all those typical CRUD operations. It's an ops friendly alternative to infrastructure as a code, like Terraform Pulumi. You can do it on the on a CLI the same way, right? So this is what we are working on already. And this will, you know, hit harbor in the next month. Uh, next thing we are currently working on is the a vulnerability dashboard, you know, right now, as you may know, there is a possibility to view vulnerabilities, but those vulnerabilities are attached to images. So if you want to know about vulnerabilities, you have to look into the image and then from there you dive into the vulnerabilities. And we would like to turn it around to see what vulnerabilities do we have and to which images are they attached or to which images they affect. So we um, you know, provide a vulnerability dashboard that allows the CISO and ops people to nav navigate vulnerabilities to see what is what vulnerabilities are there and you know, give you a better overview about the vulnerabilities. There is already an option to export vulnerabilities. So you can export vulnerabilities and you can import it somewhere else and do the analytics stuff. And yeah, we would like to have it also in Harbor. And this is what we're currently working on. Uh, this is back, so it's forward. The next thing we're um, working on is the, the harbor operator. You may know that there is already a harbor operator in, in, in harbor, but the purpose of the existing harbor operator is mostly for installing harbor and providing the initial configuration. And because it's not what you know, people had in mind when they've been uh, you know, looking for operators, there have been quite a few operators in the community developed by different companies. You know, Midwald is one, uh, Code Movers, Giant Swarm. So like there are four or five operators in the market or on the community that do basically the same thing, right? So it allows you to administer and configure your hardware instance um, and, and not just installing it, right? 
And so we tried to we tr be talking with all the uh, contributors there and maintainers of those projects to, to try to bring it all together into one official harbor operator. Um, and this will be a great alternative for you if you would like, you know, if Terraform, Pulumi, or CLI is not your thing, and you would like to do it a cloud native or not Kubernetes native way, this is the way to go uh, to use the operator, right? Um, the next thing that you know I'm working on specifically is called Har Harbor Satellite, and this is a concept where you have a little registry running inside your cluster, and this registry as a satellite is connected to ground control and receives commands and images from ground control, so that it can run on edge devices, right? So, and it also sustain um, connectivity issues, connectivity problems to your uh, upstream registry. And this is something that, you know, allows you to add resilience to your, to your cluster base, right? And you can use it as well as, uh, as a CDN. And this is how it looks like. It's, you know, very simple. We have a ground control that has uh, you know the policies, the commands, and the information what images should be present in on the satellite, and the satellite fetches the information. It's a very simple, well, it's not simple, but it's a, it's a single binary, you know, containing the satellite core, containing registry, containing the database, and it basically can run inside the Kubernetes cluster, or it can even run outside the Kubernetes cluster. And there is also an admission controller for, for developers or, I mean, for, for the operators that allows the developer not, um, um, not know that there is a, a satellite installed. Because like, if, if you deploy something to the satellite, you need to you know, point to a different registry. You know, and you don't want to instruct the developers when they want to deploy something that they should use a different registry, right? A local one. And so the admission controller will basically write the port information to point all the image requests to the local registry, right? So this is what we're currently working on. And if you would like to have a CDN, you just attach ingress to it, you know, and then you have an CDN of your registry. So this is something we are, we're currently working on. It's not yet in, in development, more in the, in the planning phase. And if you would like to join the development effort here, you know, please talk to me and we can uh, see what requirements you have. Speaking development effort, let's go to the next point, our community. So at the moment we have uh, 11 plus maintainers, you know, it depends how you define active, right? So it is like more, more or less active uh, 11 people, right? So it's, it's not so small. We have uh, five different organizations, uh, mostly prominent VMware than uh, ourselves. There's OVH, Giant Swarm, some cloud providers, Tencent. We have, I think, over 170 contributions per month, right? So it's, of course, uh, you know, bug requests, uh, open issues, and also ad hoc contributions from people who see opportunities to improve the product. Um, we are currently working on the operator side. So if you would like, to, and if you're using Harbor, and if you would like to use operators, this is a good opportunity for you to join and uh, the operator program and you know help shape the operators and the design of the operators. Same goes for the Terraform provider. We have already a maintainer who is working actively on, on the Terraform provider, uh, but you know, more is better. So if you would like to join, if you have questions about it, how, how we can contribute, how we can help, uh, there's two ways. You can just go to the website, the community website, and you will find a link to the Slack channel. You will also find a link to the be weekly community meeting that we have. Uh, so you can just join the community, talk and explain who you are, and then we can uh, see from there. You can also talk to Olin, the person here. So he is the community manager of, of Harbor, and he can also help you um, guide, navigate you uh, into, into Harbor. You can, we have some, yeah, we have some times for questions now, but if you have other questions and you need to put more time to discuss it, come later and visit us at the booth in the, um, on the other side of the hall where all the uh, CNCF projects are located. We are always there in the afternoon, so today afternoon at 14.30 and tomorrow at, uh, from 12 o'clock we are at the booth. You can come to us, talk to us and you know, we can discuss it. All right, now we have some time for questions. Ah oh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, one question.
question uh, to the replication. Right now, it's uh, possible to uh, define a uh, tag um, uh, to replicate the images to another um, to another uh, registry, uh, but it's not possible, as far as I know, uh, even not in the latest version, um, to define a. a Label no, it's it's possible to define a label, but it's not uh, uh, possible to uh, use these labels uh, which we have defined on the images to uh, not delete the images uh, and uh, at a scheduled uh, cleanup. So, will this come anyone uh, an anyone in the future? So, let me let me rephrase this. So, this means like if you at attach immutability to your images, you cannot delete those images, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a common problem we see it quite often, yeah, and we need we need to find a way, right, how to deal with it because, like, the definition of immutability is immutable, right? <laughs> so we have to find a way how we can define something that is immutable and else we'll define something that is like a bit immutable, right, or just temporarily immutable, something like this. We need to find a way how how this can be accomplished. So we we received already a few requests from the community regarding this, because you know. Sometimes you also want to clean up your immutable images after some time, and so we've been thinking about, you know, uh, discussing yesterday as well, like about having some policies on the immutability that will kind of uh, remove the immutability after some time. So maybe something like this. So we, we need to brainstorm about this this concept, how this, uh, you know, how this can be shaped into the in the, in, in the product. Do you need there any help in the in the conception uh, way? Because Definitely. Uh, we have a uh, use case where we are uh, developing our um, product in in in, um, in a private uh, environment and shipping uh, on um, releases to a public um, um, registry these um, these uh, images and uh, yeah probably we can help with our use case. Yeah, definitely. Uh, come talk to us to see how, yeah. we, can, how we can brainstorm and, and shape the design. All right. Thank you for your time.